welcome, welcome. So we got a bunch of new Talisman expansions for our Talisman 4th edition game. And figured we would do some live unboxings to find out what's inside the box. And uh, show you what to expect if you uh, pick these up. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, get into it and see what we get. So first one we're going to do is... The Magical Quest Game Revised 4th Edition, the Harbinger Expansion. This is the one I know the least about, so I'm uh, excited to check this out. Let's see what's in the box. The Harbinger Expansion. So these are, as you can see, all these are small box editions. Uh, this one requires Talisman 4th Edition. You don't need anything else. Uh, the Harbinger expansion. Brr, brr, brr. Can you stop the end of the world? Obviously, the Harbinger must be some kind of bad thing coming. So, let's look at what we get. So, we get a bunch of cards and some miniatures and some other things. What do we have here? Let's find out, shall we? So we have uh, Armageddon Crowned, End of Days. These are going to be your, uh, these are going to be your, um, what do they call it? Um, end game cards that are going to change what you do at the end of the game. Armageddon Crown. In order to use this alternate ending, you must be playing with the rest of the Harbinger expansion. Okay. If a character is on the Crown of Command and no other characters are present, he rolls on a chart. On a one, roll one die for the Armageddon Crown at the start of each turn. Place one omen of your choice on the discard pile. On top of the omen deck. Two to three, all characters lose life. Four to six, destroy the top omen. If your character is on the crown of command and there are no other characters present at the beginning of his turn, he must attack the other character instead of rolling. Uh, while a character is on the crown of command, when another character is instructed to draw adventure cards, he must draw harbinger cards instead. Ooh. All right, end of days. At the start of the game, set aside the following Harbinger cards. The Beast, the Horseman of War, the Horseman of Disease, the Horseman of Famine, and the Horseman of Death. The Herald of Disease, the Herald of War, the Herald of Famine, and the Herald of Death. Place the Beast on the Crown of Command. Then shuffle the remaining cards together and place one random card face up in each of the following spaces. The city, the village, the graveyard, the chapel, the warlock's cave, the temple, the castle, and the portal of power. The beast cannot be killed, moved, or discarded except during battle or psychic combat. A character at the Crown of Command must fight the beast in either battle or psychic combat if the character is defeated by the beast he must discard the top omen instead of losing a life if the character kills the beast he's won the game all right so we have the celestial the possessed and the ascendant divine and the harbinger so we have the celestial These would be uh, probably new characters, I'm assuming. Let's take a look. Ooh, the Celestial. Cool. I could try to paint him, but boy, I would just mess that all up, wouldn't I? Uh, so that's the Celestial. Here is the Possessed. Oh, <laughs> nice. Nice little mini there. Let's see if I can get it to focus in on it. Cool. Nice looking minis, anyways. Uh, so we have this Celestial, the Ascendant Divine, 
and the possessed and then the harbinger which is going to be this guy right here all right let's find out after a character not in the inner region draws an event move the harbinger to his space Whenever a character not in the inner region draws an event, you move the Harbinger to a space. Whenever the top omen is discarded, move the Harbinger to this card. After the next omen in the stack is resolved, try again. After a character not in the inner region draws an event, move the Harbinger to his space whenever the top omen is discarded move the harbinger to this card after the next omen in the stack is resolved whenever a character in the same region as the harbinger is instructed by a board space to draw cards he must draw harbinger cards instead harbinger card when you land in a space with the harbinger instead of encountering your space or a character in your space you must encounter the Harbinger by moving him to any other space not in the inner region and then rolling a die. So if you roll one, the end is not discard the top omen. Two, Doom will find you. Draw three Harbinger cards and add them to your space. Then encounter your space. There is no escape. Place one Harbinger card on top of each adventure deck. You are the destined one. Each character gains one fate. Five. Time is running out. You may take another turn after this one. Six. There is still hope. Choose one omen in the discard pile and place it on top of the omen stack. Ooh. So lots of craziness going on with the harbinger, isn't there? Lots of craziness. Holy crap. Come here, you cards. Open up for me. Let's see what we have here. Oh, gosh. So we have a Cursed Talisman. Let's look at the back of these cards, because usually the backs tell you so these all go together. These are Ruins, Ruins, Crater, Floodlands, Hell Pits, The Barrens, The Rift, The Necropolis, The Bog, The Chasm, The Ruins, The Ruins, The, the Crater, Okay, we have some new item cards. Sacred Offerings. Terra Shift. Augury. Dispolation. Dispolation and Dark Bending. And we have some of these cards which are these look like maybe prophecy cards let's see what's in deck number two all right so these all go with that and these must be the harbinger cards right so, let's see what do we have here. All right, so you got your figures. Harbinger sheet, 32 omens. Yes, so these are the omens. 10 terrain cards, which are these, yeah. 75 Harbinger cards, 10 Spell cards, which are these. 
three character cards and two alternate endings. Okay, blah, 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 blah. Expansion, the Harbinger symbol. All right, so some of the enemies in Harbinger possess a strength craft value. If a character encounters these enemies, he can choose to fight all these enemies in either battle and or psychic combat. Characters may exchange trophies with strength craft value for either strength counters or craft counters. Oh, so they have a both. Some of the creatures will have like a, a value of both. Let's see if I can find one. Uh, I can't find one right off the top of my hand. Uh, shouldn't be too hard. Uh, here's one. So you see this guy's got a strength and craft of nine. Strength and craft of nine. Oh my gosh. Strength and craft of 18. Holy schmoly. Strength of one, strength of two, strength of three. Okay, so a couple of them have combos. Not all of them, but a few of them. All right. Uh, the Harbinger is a beater of an ancient philosophy who has arrived to foretell the end of the world. The start of the game puts the Harbinger figure in the Harbinger sheet. After a character not in the inner region draws an event, move the Harbinger to the character space. When a character... Whenever a character in the same region as the Harbinger is instructed by a board space to draw cards, he must draw Harbinger cards instead. Whenever the top omen is discarded, move the Harbinger figure to the Harbinger sheet after the next omen in the stack is resolved. These are going to be like bad things. Rise of the Dead. third omen, the fourth omen, the fifth, oh wait, oh maybe you keep these in order because it looks like you start off with the prophecy, then you go to the first omen, the second omen, the third omen, the fourth omen, the fifth omen, sixth, seventh, the prophecy, oh wait, uh, maybe you choose a group of these, yeah, let's look, let's see what we do. Harbinger cards do not count as adventure cards while being drawn and cannot be affected by the Norba knowledge, the prophet's the prophet's ability, or similar effects. Once a harbinger card is in place face up in a space, it is treated as an adventure card. Enemies from the harbinger deck must be taken as trophies when defeated in battle or psychic combat. Omen cards. As the apocalypse looms over the world of talismans, signs appear and prophecies are fulfilled, warning that the end is not. The omen card reveals the greatest of these signs. Before the game begins, players must first decide which omen set they wish to use. Collect all eight omens, omen cards belonging to that set. Then uh, use them to make up a face-up stack. Starting with the seventh omen on the bottom, then the sixth, fifth, fourth, or when effect causes the top card of the omen stack to be discarded, take the top card of the omen stack and place it face up on top of the omen's discard pile. Then resolve any immediate effect of the newly revealed omen card. If there are no cards remaining in the omen stack, the game is over and all characters lose the game. If an effect places an omen card in the omen discard pile on top of the omen stack, resolve any immediate effects on the newly placed card. Continuous, continuous effects of the top omen card of the omen stack are always applied until the omen is discarded and no longer. Oh my gosh. All right. It talks about some keywords, terrain cards. Um... <laughs> Alternate endings. Wow, that's whew, that sounds brutal, man. That sounds pretty brutal, to be honest. Whew. Sounds 
like you know you got like you're just choosing like eight cards right if you go through all eight of these cards then boom it's over oh my gosh so you got the rise of the dead you have the stars aligned you have the shattered world and you have the armageddon Oh, okay. Bum, 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 bum. So a couple, a couple spells and some location cards and a whole bunch of uh, um, Charbinger cards. Then a couple of your endings. Three new characters. The Celestial, the Possessed, and the Ascendant Divine. Celestial, special ability, you're always good. If any effect would change your alignment to neutral, ignore it. If any effect would change your alignment to evil, ignore it and lose a life. Your craft value is equal to your current fate. Interesting. So your craft is equal to your current fate. Fate is for him four. He starts with four, a gold... Four life and four strength. Uh, after you roll a die to pray, you may ignore the result and replenish one fate instead. Whenever you gain one or more lives, you may gain one fate. Whenever you heal one or more lives, you may replenish one fate. When you attack an evil or neutral character, you may choose to make the attack psychic combat. You may not do this when you are attacked by another character. If you win, you must take one fate from the loser instead of the normal rewards. Huh, interesting. The Possessed. Special ability, you are always evil. If any effect would change your alignment to neutral, ignore it. If any effect would change your alignment to good, ignore it and lose a life. Your strength value is equal to your current life. So he's the exact opposite of the Celestial so far. Whenever you defeat an enemy in battle, you may heal a life. And at the start of your turn, you may discard one stranger or place in your space. At the start of your turn, you may discard one stranger or place in your space. If you do, you may heal a life. And the Ascendant Divine, you begin the game with four spells face down on your character card. These spells are your divine gift. Your divine gifts do not count as spells for the purpose of other effects and do not count against your spell limit. Whenever you gain strength or craft and have four or fewer divine gifts on your character card, take the cup card of the spell deck and add it to the divine gifts to your character card. Once per round, you may cast one of your divine gifts as if it were a spell, although it does not count as a spell for the purposes of other effects and does not count against the maximum number of spells you may cast during a turn. At the start of your turn, you may discard one of your divine gifts to draw a spell. Interesting. Okay, wow. And of course, we read the Harbinger stuff. Wow, that was... Uh, whew. Crazy, crazy good. A lot of good stuff there. A lot of good stuff there. Damn. Ah, damn. Damn, damn, damn. What do I do with these rubber bands? I just had out a whole bunch of rubber bands. No, no. like that I guess I'm just gonna put the cards 
in a little baggie so they don't get all chunked up. Keep them uh, nice and new looking. Put these in there, put these in there, put that on top. We don't need the stupid inserts. We don't need those. Put this aside. So that was the Harbinger. Next. Bum, 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 bum. Let's see what's in the Blood Moon. The Blood Moon expansion. gonna have a pile of that all right so it looks like uh, some item cards here we have some crazy werewolf looking cards oh it's your lickanthrope cards all right so lickanthrope you gain the following abilities during the night add two to your attack during battle and psychic combat Whenever you land on a space with another character, except in the inner region, you must attack him instead of encountering the space, because you're like, you know, crazy with. Um, whenever you defeat another character in battle to or psychic combat, the defeated character must roll a die on the werewolf's chart. Instead of you claiming your normal reward. So that's what the Wiccanthropes do. This is probably the day and night turn track. Here is a bunch of cards. I think these are like items and events and stuff. Cool. And these are also the same. Yes. A whole bunch of new items, spells, equipment. You have things like Midnight Howl. It's a lunar event. When revealed, flip the time card. Bloop. Bloop. Whenever a character is defeated by an enemy in battle or psychic combat, in addition to losing one life, you must roll one die on the werewolf chart. Discard, discard when day breaks. Ah, ha, ha. There's a plus one on that side and a minus one on this side. That's interesting. Ah, so you got uh, Harvest Horrors, Fire Salamanders, Wall of Fire, Lantern Strike, Boneyards, Witch Finder. The Wooden Stake, The Restless Dead, Holy Water, Dire Wolf, Peasant Mobs, Night Carriages, Torch Breakers. I'm not reading every card. I'm just flipping through just to look for what's interesting. Self Portraits, The Bridge. Wolf's Bane, the Fortune Teller, nice. A lot of cool cards that are going to add a whole bunch of new nighttime, daytime cool effects. Let's see what else you have here. We have alternate endings. We have three alternate endings. You can have Blood Moon Werewolf. If you are not a Lycanthrope, you must choose whether to attack the Blood Moon Werewolf using strength or craft. Each time you defeat the Blood Moon 
werewolf, remove one of his lives and immediately attack it again. If you have a standoff or are defeated, your turn ends and you must roll on the werewolf chart. A character who removes the Blood Moon's werewolf's last life wins the game. Strength of 12, craft of 12, and life of 4. You also have the Horrible Black Void. Ah, the Horrible Black Void. So if you play this, you know, so you can play them face down so you don't know what your, what your ending is. <laughs> the Horrible Black Void. You and all your possessions are pulled into a horrible black void. You lose the game. After a character encounters the horrible black void, remove it from the game, then draw another alternate ending card and place it face down on the crown of command for the next character to encounter. <laughs> and then they have the light bearers. All players start the game with characters of good alignment. Characters are always good. And if any effect tries to change your alignment, he loses one life instead. At the start of the game, each character must take two fate from their stockpile and place them on this card. At each nightfall, brah, discard one fate from this card. If the last fate is discarded, the game ends and all players lose. If a character enters the crown of command before the last fate is discarded, all players win the game. So this is like a co cooperative one. That's nice. Good to see. Characters cannot attack each other. Instead, all characters freely exchange gold, objects, and followers when they encounter each other. If two or more characters are on the same space, they may add their strength value or craft value together during battle and psychic combat. Oh. So the Lightbringers, trying to bring light from the darkness. Or you have the Black Void, which instantly kills the guy. Or you can have a big fight with the big werewolf guy. Cool. Spells, Drain Life, Curse of the Werewolf, Haunting S Poltergeist, Solstice Ritual, Benediction, Feral Hunger, Burial Rites, Exorcist, Reanimate, and another Curse of the Vampire, or Werewolf, sorry. Cast this on the character at the start of his turn. That character is, if that character is not of a Lycanthrope, he becomes a Lycanthrope. If the character is a Lycanthrope, he must roll one die on the Werewolf chart. Well, let's look at said Werewolf chart. Here is the Werewolf chart. Maybe I should... Uh, Turn this a little bit down so you guys can see a little bit. Whenever a character rolls one for his move, he must roll a die. He must roll one die and move the werewolf that number of spaces at the end of his turn. It's the same as the uh, Reaper. If it's night, the werewolf must end its movement in the first space that it enters with the character. Oh wow! So if you if you roll for him to move and it's night, he doesn't have to land exactly on him. He can just stop wherever the first character is he comes to. The character must uh, the werewolf must end his movement on the first space that it enters with the character. The werewolf chart: When a werewolf lands in a character, you must roll it a one die. Add one to your space if you are a lycanthrope. So you add one. On a one, you become a Lycanthrope. Take a Lycanthrope card, which we looked at. On a two, lose a life and immediately roll again. <laughs> On a three, one of your followers determined at random is killed. If you have no followers, you lose one life. Four, the werewolf attacks you with the strength of eight. Five, Werewolf teleports to another character of your choice who must immediately roll one die in this chart. Or six. Six or higher. 
you may either heal all of your lives, replenish all your feet, discard any adventure card from the board, or teleport to any other space in this region as your next move. Okay. Okay. Put that guy in there. So we have the Vampire Hunter. Strength 3, Craft 3, 2 Fate, a Gold, and 4 Life. After you encounter a space with instructions to draw one or more adventure cards and have drawn the required number of cards, you may investigate. To do so, discard one card on your space that is not an enemy and draw one more card to replace it, which you must encounter. So it gives you a little bit of a combination of, you know, getting rid of the cards that you don't like. Whenever you engage an enemy in battle or psychic combat, add one to your attack roll. So if you're playing with the uh, if you're playing with the Lightbringers, that would not be that great an ability because um, players don't attack one another when you're playing cooperatively. So that would be kind of be a dead power. Whenever you visit the graveyard, you must draw one adventure card instead of resolving the instructions on the space. Interesting. Not the greatest. I mean, the special ability where you can kind of cycle through a couple of the cards might be okay. This is good on, uh, you know, whenever you engage an enemy in battle or psychic combat and one to your attack roll. That's not that great. Whenever you visit the graveyard, you may draw, you may draw one adventure card instead of resolving the, oh, okay, so you can, it's a choice, all right, I kind of had to reread that. We have the Grave Robber, Strength 2, Craft 4, he has 4 life, a gold, and 3 faint. Whenever you encounter a space with instructions to draw one or more adventure cards, you may draw the top card on the adventure discard pile. And then draw the remaining cards from the adventure deck as normal. You may only do this once per turn. <laughs> Interesting. You can look at whatever's there. Hey, Peter. Sounds creepy. Oh, gee. So are all the adventure cards mixed in with the main deck? Or are each of these expansions a separate game and use? No. No, no. So, yeah. Anytime you have cards with the same back, they all just get shuffled in together. So, all these adventure cards go in with the regular adventure cards. All these spell cards go in with the spell cards. So, you can see these are all adventure cards. So, you would, add, you would shuffle these up with your normal deck. And, good lord, trying to help you try to shuffle through all those. <laughs> um... Whenever you discard an adventure card, you may place it at the bottom of the discard pile. And whenever you visit the graveyard, you may draw the top eight cards of the adventure deck and take one object of your choice, then discard the remaining cards. Oh, that's very thematic. Very thematic. Cool. The Doom Slayer special ability whenever uh, he has a strength three, craft four, four life, a gold, and three fate. Whenever your character draws an enemy, you may replenish your fate. Whenever any character draws an enemy, you may replenish one fate. Wow. So if you're playing with three or four people, that you can get your fate back really quickly. Whenever any character draws an event, you may gain one spell if your craft allows. So whenever somebody draws an event, you get a free spell, as long as your craft allows. And whenever you draw an adventure card that is not an enemy or an event, you may draw one additional card. Whenever you draw an adventure card that is not an enemy or an event, you may draw one additional card. You may only do this once per turn. Interesting. Hmm. Uh, so we got spells, we got the day and night track. This is going to come up. I'm sure when you draw some of these cards, it'll say 
flip it over from day to night. Or a lot of these cards say discard when day breaks. So a lot of these cards will only stay in effect until this goes. Well, once it goes to day, then a lot of these bad things will go away. Discard this card when day breaks. Discard this day when day breaks. Whew, brutal. That is going to make the adventure deck huge. Yeah, well, yes, it will, for sure. And then, of course, you have your Lickanthrope cards here as well. As well, You actually have a spell for Lickanthrope, too. <laughs> uh, so, you gain the following abilities at night if you're a Lickanthrope. Add two to your attack during battle or psychic combat. Whenever you land in a space with another character... You must attack him instead of encountering the space, so you don't have any choice. And whenever you defeat him, another character in battle or psychic combat, they have to roll on the werewolf chart. <laughs> brutal. Brutal, I say. Of course, we have our little tokens. Put this in there for now until I. Uh, t -t 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 -t. You have adventure cards, you have your spell cards, right to right to. You have our time deck, the lick and throw cards, the alternate ending cards, the character cards, the figures, werewolf card, and figurine. Expansion rules, timing. During the day, each character subtracts one from its attack score during battle and psychic combat. Creatures subtract one. Oh, during the day, creatures. So, like, when you're fighting a creature. During the night, each creature adds one. Okay. If a character fights two or more enemies at the same time, each enemy subtracts one or adds one to their attack, depending on whether it's day or night. Uh, whenever you draw one or more events, uh, you must flip the time card uh, to the other side. Daybreak occurs when the time card is flipped to the day side. Nightfall occurs when the time card is flipped to the night side. Oh, whenever a character draws one or more events during his turn, before he encounters the, any cards, he must flip the time card over to the other side. Daybreak occurs when the time card is flipped to the day side. Nightfall. Oh, so it automatic. Okay. If an encounter instructs a character to flip the time card to a specified side, and the time card is already flipped to that side, the time card is not flipped. Some adventure cards, expansions, fire new lunar events. Lunar events are treated in the same respect like normal events, except for they have additional rules. Instead of requiring players to flip the time card over, Lunar events indicate which side the time card must be flipped to. Players do not place lunar events on the game board. Instead, lunar events are placed next to the time card remaining in play until the time card is flipped over. This may result in multiple lunar events being in play at the same time. Hang on a second. I have to see this again. At the start of the turn... Whenever a character draws one or more events... Oh, when he draw one or more events during his turn. Before he encounters any cards, he must flip the time turn over to the other side. Example, it is currently day and the vampire huntress draws an event during her turn. Before the event card is resolved, nightfall occurs and the time card is flipped over to the night side. Oh, so you only do that when you draw an event. Okay. Not when you draw any card. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Whenever you roll one for your movement, blah, 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 you get to move the werewolf. <laughs> werewolf figure moves the knight and enters the space with the character. He must end his movement in that space. 
If the werewolf figure has may freely cross the Storm River at the Sentinel, the werewolf figure cannot cross the Portal of Power. The werewolf figure may enter and leave expansion boards such as the Dungeon Realm according to the normal rules for the characters entering and leaving these expansion boards. If the werewolf figure reaches the last space of any expansion board, such as the treasure chamber in the dungeon room, it must immediately move to any space in any region except the inner region and end its move in that space. The player moving the werewolf figure chooses which space to move it to. Whenever the werewolf figure ends its move in a space containing one or more characters, the player who moved the figure must choose one character on that space. The new character rolls a die and consults the chart, blah, blah, blah. And then we, of course, have our alternate endings. Okay. Yeah, the encounter deck. No, I'm not sleeving any of these cards. <laughs> Am I going to sleeve these cards? Uh, no. No, I'm not going to be sleeving all these cards. Uh, let's see. The Reaper. Guess what this is all about. <laughs> More cards. You see this? You see this? Mr. OG? Mr. OG man, do you see this? A lot more cards coming. You see what I'm saying? There's going to be... You're, you're going to have... You're going to have a lot of cards. There's the... Oof. Yeah, good. That would cost a fortune. No kidding. You're right there. Absolutely. All right, so the back of these cards show... Yes, adventure cards. All these are adventure cards. Adventure, 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 adventure. And let's look at this one. We have a couple spells. Oh, quite a few spells, actually. Lots of spells. Ooh, we got red ones. I don't know what the red ones are. These are something. I'll have to look that up. And more adventure cards. More adventure cards. That's a lot of adventure cards. You know, take those and those, and you're talking. Whew. Yeah. So we got the Trapper, the Chimera, the Haunt, the Crypt Keeper, the Hydra, the Crone, the Lord of the Pits, the Prophecy, the Riding Horse, the Nightmare, Sabertooth Tiger, the Mammoth, the Giant Spider, the Cave Troll, the Magician, the Boatman, the Fool's Gold. The Jester, the Idol, the Academy, two bags of gold, Shovel, the Casket, Psychic Crystal, the Familiar, Horse and Cart, the Broad of Ruin, the Closed Shop, Orb of, uh, Orb of Destiny, the Fate Stealer, the Goblin Trapsmith. Just to name a few, I'm not going through every single one of these, but just ones that sound interesting. We've got some more figurines here. We've got a bunch of spells, slow motion, transmute, reflection, fireball, gust of wind, displacement, alteration, enrich, speed, resurrection, blessed, sleep, shatter. Summon Serpent, uh, Summon Storm Crow, and Displacement. T to name a few, I'm not going through those step by step by step. Let's see what we have here. So, we of course have the Grim Reaper. When the Grim Reaper lands in a character, you roll a die. On a one, it is time. You lose all your lives. You are killed. Game over. So, Grim Reaper lands on you. And you roll a one. 
and you don't have any fate to re-roll it, it's over. You die. Your character's gone. Two. I'm here for that one. One of your followers determined at random must be declared. If you don't have any followers, you lose a life. Three. Dice with me. Roll two dice for yourself and two for the Grim Reaper. If the Grim Reaper's result is higher, you lose a life. Otherwise, there is no effect. Four, a game of chess. Miss your next turn. Five, there must be a mistake. <laughs> there must be a mistake. The Grim Reaper teleports to the character of your choice, who must immediately roll one die in this chart. And six, I have plans for you. You may choose to gain either one strength, one craft, one life, one gold, one spell, or one fate, or teleport to any space on this region as your next move. So, five, you can send them off to fight somebody else. I love it. I love it. That's just, it's like, no. And the, 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 the wording on this is perfect. There must be some mistake. Wait a minute. There must be some mistake. It's not my time. It's somebody else's time. <sighs> All right. We have the knight, who is a four strength, three craft, four, I'm sorry, four strength, three craft, four life, a gold, and one fate. He only starts with one fate. You begin the game with a, one sword and one armor from the purchase deck. After rolling a die when praying, you may add up to two to your score. You are always good. Ignore any effect that changes your alignment. And you may... Not attack other good characters when you encounter them, except on the Crown of Command space, where you must attack them. We have the Merchant, which is a Strength 2, Craft 4, Life 4, Gold, and 4 Fate. You begin the game with 5 Gold. You may evade enemy dragons and monsters by paying 1 Gold each. You may trade with the character that you land on by exchanging any one object of yours for one of theirs, including magic objects. When you visit the village, the market, or market day, you may also discard one of your own objects to take any one object from the purchase deck. You may also sell any of your objects for one gold each and magic objects for three gold each. So he's probably going to be pretty rich there. Sage, two strength, four craft, four life, gold, and three fate. You begin the game with the spell. If you do not have any spell at the start of your turn, you may draw a spell. You always know what the top card is on the adventure and spell deck. You may look at them whenever you wish. Oh, because he's a sage. So he always knows what's coming up. Uh, when you roll the die for your move, you may ignore the result on your first die roll and roll it again. You must accept the result of your second die roll. The Dark Cultist, Strength 3, Craft 3, a 4 Life, a Gold, and 1 Faint. Special Ability, when you attack another character, you may choose to make it Psychic Combat. You may not do this when you are attacked by another character. Whenever you kill an enemy or defeat another character and force them to lose 1 life, you roll a die to receive a gift from the Forces of Darkness. If you defeat a good character, you may add one to the result. So gain a fate, gain a gold, gain a life, gain a strength, gain a craft, gain a spell. You are always evil, ignore any effect that changes your alignment. So that, my friends, is the big three expansions. Uh, so you move the Reaper any, I believe it's whenever you roll one. I'm pretty sure it's still one, right? Isn't it one? Yeah, so 90 adventure cards, 26 spell cards, 12 Warlock quest cards. Ah, that's what these are. Warlock quest cards. 
So now when you visit the Warlock, he will give you a quest card. Uh, that's what these are. 10, 11, 12, yes. So you shuffle these in. I think there's a, a lot of expansions included these now. So you can deliver a spell, discard one faint, deliver five points of craft trophies, strength trophies, travel to the city, travel to the cursed glade, take another life from another character, kill one enemy. Discard one Fowler. Uh, deliver one magic object. Deliver three gold or deliver two gold. Of course, you get these randomly. You don't get to choose. Right? You got to shuffle them up and put them in the big pile of deck. Pile. Bunch of spells. I think we went through with these already. I gotta combine all my decks together now. Oh my gosh. Uh, Grim Reaper card. The Brutal Reaper is brutal though. Brutal. I'm telling you, it's brutal. Because you can like have a really good character and then somebody moves that Grim Reaper on you and you just, just flat out die. It's like, wow, really? That's brutal. Just die from the Grim Reaper. Well, I mean, it makes sense, but wow, it's still brutal. It's like, you, you know, and then the thing that, that when you play with the Grim Reaper, right? Whoever's like winning the game always gets attacked by the Grim Reaper because nobody else wants you winning. So, um. <laughs> Yeah, whenever a player rolls a one, so not only do you get to move the big bad werewolf, you get to move the Grim Reaper as well. Oh, actually, I was incorrect about the Warlock's cards. When playing with the Warlock quest cards, when a character lands on the Warlock's cave space, that player chooses freely one of the available Warlock quest cards from among those available at the Warlock quest deck, instead of rolling a die to determine which quest is he has assigned. Once he has chosen, he places the card face up in his play area, once the quest is complete, the card is removed from the game. Therefore, each Warlock quest card can only be completed once per game. If a character with a Warlock quest card is killed, return the card to the deck. No other rules governing Warlock quest cards continue to apply when the Warlock quest card are used. Only one quest may be accepted at a time. Quests must be completed as soon as possible and so on. Blah, blah, blah. So you do get to freely choose. And I think they changed this rule because some of the characters kind of conflicted with some of the rules. Like like one like the ninja, I think it's the ninja or the samurai can't have followers. And if you randomly draw the one that says deliver a follower, you could never complete that quest. So I know there was some I think they changed this rule because of that. Or maybe there's another expansion that changes this rule, which is a possibility. Uh, uh, the, the Grim Reaper may freely cross the Storm River at the Sentinel and from the Temple to the Tavern and vice versa. At the cost of a single movement point. Grim Reaper may not cross the portal of power as he is already present in the inner region. 
Bum, 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 bum. Characters of Land and the Grim Reaper don't encounter him. Gr Grim Reaper can't be affected by any spell, adventure card, or special ability. He's special. He's, he's special. So that's a look at the Reaper. Holy cow. The Blood Moon and the Harbinger. If you thought, if you thought Talisman was easy, just throw a couple of these suckers in the game and then see how easy it is. Oh my god. It ramps it up quite a bit, I'm telling you. Anyways, uh, so that's three. We got a we got some more. We have to we have some more we have to go over sometime. We got the Frost March expansion. We have the Firelands expansion. We have the Sacred Pool expansion. And the Lost Realms expansion. So we'll do those uh, in another time. So uh, thanks, you guys, for showing up. I uh, appreciate it. And uh, hopefully we'll uh, get a, another game of Talisman in uh, where we can start using all of our super cool new expansions. So, uh, looking forward to it. Until then, guys, take care, have a good night, and we'll see you guys soon.